right now is actually one of the precincts that I have for Taylor Forum. Uh, so I'm happy that all you guys came out. I just want to give you a couple of facts. Uh, Georgia has over 4 million uninsured individuals that need health care. Of that, of that 2 million, at least 800,000 people are qualified to get a tax subsidy for the Affordable Care Act. Uh, the good thing about the Affordable Care Act, which rolled out in October the 1st, and what we're doing this town hall meeting about is to uh, give everybody the information so that they have it on the Affordable Care Act. And so you can judge for yourself, but for you to listen to the speakers, and if you know anybody that needs the Affordable Care Act, to encourage them to go online and sign up at healthcare.gov. So I have two speakers here today, and we're going to go ahead and get started because they've come a long way to come out here and speak to people. So I have Aunt Julie Knowles, and want to make sure I'm pronouncing that right. Okay. Um, okay. She is a regional organizing lead for Get Covered America. Ms. Knowles grew up in Seattle, Washington, and spent most of her college years in Los Angeles, California. She is the youngest of eight, and many of her immediate family members reside in the Northwest. And because of the ACA in general, in the health insurance marketplace specifically, insurance companies can no longer deny people with pre-existing conditions. They are banned from putting caps on health care treatment when a patient's health is most valuable. Are vulnerable. And many of uh, the Affordable Care Act's provisions create a structure that supports preventive treatment from infancy to Medicare recipients, including her grandmother, who is now 95 years old. Ms. Knowles is excited to present Get Covered America's mission in its critical role for improving the health and wellness of thousands of Georgia's residents across the state. Ms. Knowles. she would cut it down you know I, I appreciate you reading my whole life story <laughs> find what she wanted um, again my name is Anjali Knowles and I'm excited to uh, let everybody know about the health insurance marketplace and our work with Get Cover Georgia um, I mean sorry our work with Get Cover America so um, so with the new health insurance marketplace have can you raise your hand if you've heard of that term health insurance marketplace this is gives me an idea of what I'm working with here. Okay, so we're gonna start with what the, with this new health insurance marketplace, it gives access, sorry, access to affordable health care options and access to the health care system, which is why um, this is so important for many Georgians. Um, also, it means that there's financial protection because when you don't have coverage and you're driving around the road and you get in a big accident, Usually that emergency, even if you might have something small and you end up going to the emergency room, it's a big bill if you don't have coverage. Um, and so that's, that's what, it, what this law is about. And in, in addition, there's overwhelming evidence that, um, that people have better health, health, healthy outcomes once they have coverage. Um, and it saves lives when you do have coverage. So that's one, that's one of the reasons why we're out here. Um, trying to get my notes to slide. Okay. Um, so Get Covered America, that's what our organization is. We are a nonprofit, nonpartisan campaign, which is working to teach people about the health insurance marketplace. We are grassroots, which means we go door to door. We go to small presentations like these or large events. Um, to do outreach with individuals to make sure they know about the facts about uh, the health care law, specifically with the health insurance marketplace. And we connect consumers to the right information. So if you're having trouble going through the computer or if um, reading all the paperwork is difficult for you, we'll connect you to the correct person that can help assist you in that situation to make sure you understand what type of coverage you are getting. We do not enroll com consumers, and this is really important because um, people will, our parent organiz or our parent name, our original name was Enroll America, but the work we're doing is to get people covered. Um, so we can't enroll people, but we can help facilitate uh, a big event where people would get enrolled um, to, into the marketplace. 
Um, so something I would say is that I'm with Georgians for, um, sorry, I'm, I'm with Get Covered America, and we do outreach and education to make consumers aware of the new health insurance options and how to get help to enroll. Something you should never uh, see us saying is that we do outreach and enrollment, and we're going to help people get enrolled ourselves. That's not what we do. I just want to make that clear so there's no confusion. And when you guys go talk to your community it's about what we do, talk to your churches, they can be clear that we don't actually do the enrollment. And I'm going to go into why that is in a minute. Um, so the big picture is that on October 1st, which wasn't too long ago, um, the health insurance marketplace opened up. And what that meant is there's an online site, a one-stop shop, as if you were going to kayak to get a whole bunch of look at all the plane tickets or go to auto traders and look at all the cars that are available. This is an option for you to look at about 68 plans and decide which one best suits you and your family. They are private plans and you would have to put your specific information in to know if you'll get financial assistance. Most families fall in that statistically to get financial assistance, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But this is what the marketplace is. When you hear that word, it's an online site. And, but it's a bigger decision than choosing a plane ticket. And so we understand it takes time. People have to talk to a couple of their family members, make sure that they're getting the things that they need for their family, and so that's why we're here, is to make sure we do the follow-up so people are clear and ready to go into the marketplace. And does anybody know how many uninsured Georgians there are? Anybody? Do you want to guess? Okay, so there is about 1.8 million, and a large percentage of those individuals are eligible to go into the health insurance marketplace and get financial assistance. So if you hear the word tax subsidies, tax credit, it's all about financial assistance um, based on your income. So the num that's the approximate number just so it's a huge number. We are fifth in the state, I mean in the country. We are fifth in the country with the largest number of uninsured. So this isn't a small number that we're working with and that's why I, I, when I go out and do outreach at different events, people, I just throw sand in the air and I'll probably hit an uninsured person because that's how many people are uninsured. Um, and it's, it, we want to make sure people have coverage. So if, you're, um, if you are already have coverage, um, such as Medicaid, B, VA benefits, TRICARE, Medicare, Peach uh, Care for Kids, or you have employee insurance, there wouldn't be a reason for you to go to a marketplace. It, um, it's not, you're not being forced to go into the marketplace. It's a choice that you and your family make, okay? Um, individuals, the type of people who would likely go into the marketplace are gonna be individuals and families who don't already have access to affordable health insurance to do their workplace. This would be like retail workers, for example, or um, a lot of the construction workers, which is very important because they may get hurt on the job a lot, you know? So it's pretty important that they have protection for them and their families. Um, it would be uh, restaurant workers. Um, sometimes that, that is the case with a lot. It would be students that are just out of college, but they might be in grad school. I'm just giving you a picture of the type of people. And they don't have insurance to their parents. So with the uh, ACA, um, up until the year 26, you can go under your parents' plan. But these are people who can buy affordable plans in the marketplace. Um, there's catastrophic plans for those under the age of 30. Um, there is the option for people who do have employee benefits to go into the marketplace, but they need to, it's, it's, a, it's a numbers game when it comes to that. So I'm just going to read it verbatim so there's no confusion. Individuals who are offered insurance but the employee only premium exceeds 9.5 of the household income or the plan does not meet 60% of the minimum actuarial value. So that's a lot of words and a very complicated thing. So if that's something that you're thinking about, like, oh, I have coverage through my through my employer, that's where we would want you to go and speak to a navigator or a certified application counselor, which are the actual people who can help you. Call the 1-800 number 
or get some of your questions by going to healthcare.gov answered. So because that's a deeper thing and that's beyond what Get Covered America does. And also individuals, again, with pre-existing conditions who fall under the above criteria that I've mentioned would all be eligible because you can no longer be denied. Starting January 1st, adults can no longer be denied for a pre-existing condition. And sometimes that could be asthma or <laughs> migraines. So this is a pretty um, great uh, law and a great uh, system for a lot of people. Um, in order to go into the marketplace, you also have to live in a service area. So that would be where the plans are available. Um, you have to be a U.S. citizen or national or be a non-citizen who is loss lawfully present in the U.S. for the entire period which the enrollment is sought. And you cannot be uh, incarcerate, incarcerated. But um, you can apply for the marketplace, marketplace if uh, pending a deposition of charge, and you can apply um, for Medicaid and Peach Care at any time. Um, so what often happens is the case is children will have Medicaid or Peach Care, but the parents won't have any coverage. And so what happens when the parent gets sick? And so that's an example where the marketplace would be beneficial for that individual. Okay, so the, I'm going to just talk about a little bit about the plans. Um, the plans have 10 essential benefits, and the most these uh, these 10 essential benefits are what make um, insurance so different than what it was before. And also, there is no um, there is financial assistance with all the plans, and there's no fine print, is what I was going to say. Um, also, there needs to be simple language and you can't be denied for a pre-existing condition. And the reason I keep repeating that is because that's been one of the biggest reasons why people have not been able to get coverage in the past. Um, so th I'm gonna tell you what some of the t those 10 essential benefits are. Um, regular doctor visits, emergency services, hospital care, pregnancy, childbirth, and newborn care, mental health and substance use treatment, prescription medications, rehabilitative treatment, laboratory services, preventative care, and pediatric services, including for children, all the plans have to have vision and dental included. Um, our organization, again, is impartial, so we don't push one plan or the other. We just let people know that when you get into the marketplace, all these plans have to have these services in them. So what we are doing is our organization is doing outreach to identify who the uninsured are and make sure they know about this option and see if this option will help them. And we don't see by actually enrolling people, we connect them to the per people that enroll. So it's really basically one-on-one -on -one outreach, church outreach. A type of event we might do is hold a big uh, summit at a church and there'd be other organizations there and some people could ask questions and come and do phone calls to the neighborhood and talk to people and ask them if they know about the health insurance marketplace at this summit. Some other people might actually go and speak to a navigator who would be at the summit and actually enroll in the plan there. Some people might just be doing leafleting and coming back after they've done the summit and saying how many people they got to talk to that day. So that's like the kind of work that we help coordinate and organize. Um, now, it's a one, two, three, four process, and once you decide that I want to go to the marketplace, you first have to create an account, and you have to put in all your information. You, you browse through the plans. If you're able to understand everything there, because there is no fine print now, then, um, then you browse through the plans, and then you actually enroll and select a plan. Um, now, there's two uh, major person-to-person -person assistance you can get with this. So there's all this is free. Um, you can get free help online, on the phone, or in person. And you can go to navigators or certified applications counselors. The difference between a navigator and the certified application counselor is navigators were federally funded. Um, and they're throughout all the what's called federally funded marketplaces in the, in the among the states in the nation. So 
that's where there would have been navigators. Um, and then certified application counselors, they're with an organization who's a certified organization um, to do outreach. Um, navigators, they both go through the same licensing process, but their training afterwards is a little bit different. So navigators must do education and outreach and um, they, and certified application counselors must belong to organizations that, and they can be agents and brokers. Um, so that's the main difference. You shouldn't be paying any of them. If you're going to talk to someone about deciding which plan to choose from, you shouldn't be giving any money in that process. There should be no money given directly to someone who's giving you assistance at that level. So if you feel, if you're being asked for any monetary something, um, you should contact us and we'll uh, follow up with you regarding that. Um, no one has had that happen from my knowledge and outreach, but I was just letting you guys know. You, shouldn't, um, you can also do a paper application, and this might be the case in more rural areas or people who aren't comfortable with the computers. It's a bit of a longer process, but there is that option available. Um, so what are we asking today? Today I have what's called commit cards. And what that is, is basically letting us know what your health care coverage status is and for us to follow up with you at another time to do outreach and education in your community. If you guys have, how many of you, get, how many of you all have like kids that are in school right now? So the places that you, we'd love to do outreach at is at a sporting event, at a PTA meeting, at a YMCA event, at a boys and girls club and have a larger audience in Paulding to be a part of this conversation. Um, how many of you belong to a church? Uh, like, it's okay if you, go to a lot, if you go church hopping, you know, so that's fine too. But if you belong to a church, we'd love to connect to you because we have a faith outreach plan and uh, we also do fall festivals and we wanna, that's a great place for us to do outreach. Um, let me think, how many of you guys go tailgating? Tailgaters, no tailgaters in here? Okay, what about any type of activities like baby showers, barbecues, holiday parties? I'm naming all these things and it really does take like little groups to build bigger groups and that's why we need your help because as I said, there are so many uninsured, uninsured and this is just a speck in the sand if we just only get to talk to you. So that's why we're here today is to do outreach and education. So I ask that I'm going to pass around the, um, the, commit, the cards and you just fill it out and you can mark if you'd like to volunteer or not, but at least fill out the cards so we know that you came to our meeting today. And um, are there any questions that I can answer? I one. Yes. Yes, and actually, they have to do it at 26. 26 is when you get kicked off your parents' plan. Yeah. So the, the year they turn 26? Yes. They just sign up for the... Open. If they don't... So when is open enrollment? Okay, so open enrollment, and I, I, I think I accidentally skipped that side. Um, open enrollment is, uh, is began on October 1st. So you can go now, and it lasts until March 31st. So, uh, do you think it'll be the same time? It, will it be an annual open enrollment? No, okay, so this first open enrollment, because there are so many uninsured, is much longer than the future ones will be as it is set now. So open, remo open remo re enrollment, excuse me, is um, if you get your enrollment by December 15th, if you get your plan by December 15th, excuse me, and... Uh, then you're, you, it would kick in on January 1st. So the year. Okay. The child, turn, the child has a birthday in February. Mm hmm They'll be turning 26. So really in December when they're 25. No, they don't need to do it then. Um, so if you get your plan in January 15th, you, it goes to the next month. February 1st is when the coverage kicks in. Because they, they'd still be under their parents' plan is basically what you're asking. So they would wait until they turn 26? Well, so it's driven by their birthday. 
yeah, for 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 the child to no longer be part of their parents' plan. So the the good thing is their birthday falls during the open enrollment period. Now for someone whose birthday falls during the non-open enrollment period, they'd have to wait. There's actually some, ex that's an example of when someone could enroll. There's some circumstances and I, there, there's a list of circumstances and that's actually not in my scope, but somebody else could probably answer that of when um, during the non-open enrollment period you can still get in. And there's, it's reasonable exceptions, like if you have a life it's it's a pretty it's a pretty long life like if you have another child in your family or something like that so um, so after so just so you know December fifteenth is the date you need to get enrolled by in order to be have coverage on January first and then after that it's like a month rollover so if you w if you get it by January fifteenth it goes till February first is when the coverage begins if you wait till February fifteenth then it March 1st is when the coverage begins. So that's the pattern. Is there any other questions? Are there any other questions? Excuse me. Okay, I'll go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's, let's give Angelia another hand. Okay. All right, we have another we have another speaker for you. Her name and I love to see young people get involved. I think this is great. We have Erin Harrison, graduated summa cum laude from Hampton University in 2011 with a Bachelor of Science degree in Chemistry. She is currently a third year medical student at Morehouse College, Morehouse School of Medicine, which hopes on specializing in emergency medicine. Erin serves on the board of directors as VP of Programming for Health Stat an organization that unites health professional students in service, education, and advocacy to promote a healthier Georgia. Arian's life motto is, motto is, to whom much is given, much is required. That's mine too. As a result, she is passionate about eliminating disparity in health care by providing quality care and services to underserved communities and individuals. In April of 2013, Arian organized a team of healthcare volunteers and organizations and conducted a health fair for Atlanta's West End community that resulted in over 200 medical and dental screenings. In her spare time, Arian serves as a big sister through the Big Brother Big Sister program of the Atlanta metro area. I present to you Arian. Like she said, I'm Erin. I work with an organization called HealthStat, which stands for Health Students Taking Action Together. And it's an interdisciplinary organization. It's nonprofit, and we have health professional students from all over the state of Georgia. And one of the things we're focused on right now is Medicaid expansion. Um, so first, I have some handouts I'm just going to pass out, and I'm going to talk to you a little more about what Medicaid expansion is and how it will affect Georgia if we don't expand or if we change our mind and we do expand. All right, so just to get an idea, how familiar is everyone with what Medicaid is right now? So raise your hand if you know what Medicaid is. Okay? Okay. Um, raise your hand if you know it's different than Medicare. <laughs> okay. So Medicaid is basically a statewide and a federal program that we have here in the state of Georgia. Um, it's been a while since the, it's been a long, <laughs> sorry. It's been present since the 60s. And currently, it covers low-income families, is kind of what most people know about it. So I'm going to ask some questions, and I want you guys to raise your hand. Um, just real quickly, it's pop quiz time. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to read just some quick scenarios of some people's lives, and I want you to tell me whether or not you think they are currently covered under Medicaid, OK? So we have a working mother with two children who only make 17000 a year at a gas station. Raise your hand if you think she's currently covered under Medicaid. Okay? Okay. I'm going to tell you the answers at the end. Um, a 42-year-old man with diabetes, single, no kids, who recently lost his job. So raise your hand if you think he would be covered. So he's unemployed, single man. Okay. A currently unemployed mother of three with an income of $6,000 over the past year. Medicaid? Okay. 
And lastly, a disabled 56-year-old who recently began receiving $875 per month in Social Security disability. Think he's covered? It's a man. Okay. Um, so the answer is none of these people are actually covered under Medicaid as it is right now. Um, and this is why Medicaid expansion is such a big thing. So um, the working mother with two children making $17,000 a year, she makes too much money to cover, cover for, um, to be qualified. 42-year-old men men or single parents and single people without children do not qualify for Medicaid. Um, unemployed mother of three making 6,000 does not qualify for Medicaid. And a disabled 56-year-old also would not qualify for Medicaid based on his Social Security income. Okay? So currently, there is a very large gap. And as Anjali just talked about, we have what's called the um, exchanges, which, are, which have opened up and are available to people who make what we consider 100% of the federal poverty line. So basically, if you make 100 to 400% of the federal poverty line, that means you can go out there and you can look and you can use the exchanges and figure out which health insurance you want to purchase. But right now, we have a gap of who's currently covered under Medicaid, which as you guys can see, does not cover people who make really any significant amount of money. Um, to give you guys some specific numbers, currently for one person to, to be under 100% of the federal poverty line, which is the number that starts the exchanges, you need to make $958 a month. If you make that or above, then that's when you get to the exchanges. Anybody below that does not qualify for the exchange. Family of two, 12, around $1,300 a month. Anything above that, you do not get Medicaid, but you could qualify for the exchange. Um, so these are kind of the problems that we're having right now as far as who's available for coverage. So, oops, sorry. So right now, some people have heard that the idea to expand Medicaid is optional. When President Obama passed the Affordable Care Act, he said everyone should qualify for some type of insurance, whether it be Medicaid or whether it be the exchanges. And the way he did that is set the federal poverty line to say, if you reach 133% of the federal poverty line or below, you qualify for Medicaid, and at 100% or above, you qualify for the exchanges. So there is some overlap of people who can choose Medicaid versus the exchange, but that way everyone is covered. The Supreme Court said it's not fair for the federal government to push that on all of the states. So what happened is those people who are 100% and above qualify for the exchanges. The people who are below the 133 don't qualify for Medicaid unless they were previously covered here in Georgia. Um, and currently, that's up to the governor. The governor has complete power to decide whether or not we expand Medicaid or don't. So what the organization I'm working with is doing is trying to kind of spread the word about what it means to be expanded and to let people know that expansion is really something that is going to help most people we know. Currently, their estimates saying that about 600, somewhere between 600 to 900,000 people would qualify for Medicaid if we, 600,000 to 900,000 would qualify for Medicaid expansion if we expanded it. But right now, they are not going to qualify. Um, estimates say that if we expand Medicaid, we could save close to 4,000 lives a year, um, just of people who are dying because of lack of insurance. And so we know currently that insurance is something, studies have shown people with insurance live longer, they're healthier, those kind of things. So we want to make sure that everyone is covered. Um, currently, one in two low-income um, Georgians are uninsured. So that means 50% of people are not, 50% of low-income people are not insured at all. Um, and we would like to kind of cover this gap. Part of the problem with the gap is people who aren't insured, when they go to the hospital, they're going to get billed and have to pay that. If they can pay it, or if no one pays it, then the hospital doesn't make money either. Um, we've seen in some more rural areas, actually, hospitals are having to shut down because they can't afford to continue to see patients who can't pay. And they still have to see them because it's an emergency, but if we can't pay them back, then they're not going to be able to operate. Um, so it's kind of a pretty extreme problem here in this state. So along with the handouts, which just kind of have some more detailed numbers, I also have some cards if you're interested in letting the governor know how you feel. Um, it's a quick postcard. You can just address it and let him know if you're interested in expanding. Um, but really, I just wanted to open up for questions to kind of help clarify what all of this means. Any questions? In your four examples, 
Mm -hmm. Would any of those people qualify for the exchange? Yes. So all four of those people would qualify for Medicaid if we expanded. No. If, do they, uh, under the present system, uh, would they qualify for being on the exchange? No. So they don't qualify for Medicaid, and they don't qualify for uh, the exchange. So how many people fall into that category? That's the six to 900,000 people that are in that category. Okay. So they pretty much are largely going to be left uninsured. Any questions? Any other questions? That's a great question. Hmm? What about the cost of this? The cost? As far as the cost of expanding Medicaid? Well, for the state, I'm you mean? mean? For signing up for the affordable health care. I mean, how, how do we find out what the cost would be per person? If you're unemployed, you know, would there be a cost? To sign up for Medicaid.